Hi, my name is Neil Aver from Design Academy of Art and I will be your host for the documentary of the 2014 Neighbor Program. So what is the Neighbor Program? Neighbor Program is basically involving four different schools from four different countries coming together to share and exchange cultures. The four schools are namely King Mongkut's University from Thailand, La Salle College of the Arts from Singapore, Venus University from Indonesia and our very own Design Academy of Arts from Malaysia, also the host for this year's Neighbour Programme. So right now, we are here at Design Academy of Arts awaiting for the arrival of the participating schools. The theme for this year's Neighbour Programme is Urban Landscape Between New and Old and through this documentary I'll be sharing with you bits and pieces of my thoughts throughout the Neighbour Programme. This is our first group. And this is the stuff that we really do. We found out three ways that we need in architecture. For the first day, as we've listened to two talks covering the topics of wasteland and conversation with the city, as well as going through the ice-breaking session, I think these activities have impacted us to think in a new perspective, showing us that, hey, urban landscape isn't just about the buildings or the lifestyle or the culture. In fact, each and every one of us are a part of the urban landscape. But it brings me to wonder, as we live in a city as part of the urban landscape, have we ever thought about how this urban landscape really came about? Or in the case of the icebreaking session, has it crossed our mind to question what really does the organizer want us to learn from this activity? What really is the hidden meaning behind everything that we see and do? Today we'll be visiting Sukabing Serenda at Rawang and also Malacca's UNESCO World Heritage Sites. A little something that I've observed from this trip today is with the advancement of technology, it makes us very comfortable that as we leave our comfort zone, we begin to miss the fan, we begin to miss the comfort of an air-conditioned room. Hence, we feel unmotivated, we become selective of what we see and eventually neglect a lot of possibilities that could happen around us. Yeaver. <laughs> Yeaver. Yeaver. Yeah, I'm the host for the documentary of this neighbor program. Okay. I just want to ask you, um, sorry, a few questions. Because um, this year's theme is about urban landscape and you as a landscape <coughs> designer, what are your views about this and what do you think that this generation of designers should mm. learn from this neighbor program like having the team as urban landscape? Oh, I see. Okay. So all these people are coming from different parts of Asia, right? Yeah. And then <coughs> I think in Asia, we got a very, very particular con uh, character mm -hmm. because I think, I don't know about these guys, but a lot of us are trained overseas. Yeah. We come back with the America, we come back Australia, mm -hmm. uh, England. Uh, and then I think what we need really to, to do very seriously in this part of the world is to look at the living condition in Asia. Asia is still a very poor uh, region, very big population. If you look at India, you look at China, uh, Indonesia. So the idea is to, to try to find solutions within our own tradition, our own culture, our own arts and crafts, uh, and, and make that, that difference. Um, so in, in other words, try not to do kind of globalized mm. solutions. Glo glo globalization is very boring uh, from the architectural point of view. I think we need to 
root it down into Asia, which has got so such a long history, so fascinating culture, so diverse culture and languages. Mm -hmm. So I think the challenge for urban landscape in this part of the world is how we can make it into a, a bit more of an interesting Asian urban culture. Japan is very strong. If you look at Indonesia, like ba places like Bali is very strong. But if you look at places like Singapore, or Kuala Lumpur, or a, a lot of other places, now it's gone so global, it looks like any other international city with very, very little character. Um, I also want to ask, um, with you know, um, restrictions mm. from like our education system, mm. what do you think like, the generation should do to change the situation so that our ideas can actually come true? I think, I think young people like you guys got to travel a lot. Mm. Not necessarily in, in, in all these expensive European Western countries, but travel a lot in Asia. Mm. The traveling will teach you a lot and, and make your eyes kind of think. Yeah, uh, There is so much that you can actually learn and, and, and ground yourself. Uh, so, so I think because a lot of us are now using yeah. technology and gadgets and things like that. But I think travel will balance up some of these other things. So then we are a bit more grounded uh, for young people. Nowadays when we travel to places, it has become a trend to take photographs first before actually appreciating and taking in the landscape as it is. The question lies in, do we really travel for the sake of taking pictures and showing that we've been to that place before, or do we travel because we want to connect and understand that place better? Each place that we go to, they hold within them a story in which our raw eyes cannot see. So I guess it is really important to have the right attitude as we go travelling to appreciate and truly understand the story behind each and every landscape that we come across. As we tour around Kuala Lumpur today, it's fascinating to know how the land we now stand on, it used to be a muddy road, a farm, and even a railway track. And as development comes year after year, our roads are layered by layers after layers of history. The old is buried as the new is laid. This has really struck me to think that if the history is being buried without any documentation or whatsoever, how many of us would actually know what has happened in the process when the old became new? The buildings, for example, what took place in between? The hard work of the workers rushing day and night to complete the project. We see the outcome today, nice and furbish, but have we perhaps neglected the process it took to create this outcome? I think this is something we should really ponder upon in Neighbour Programme as we see the students' artworks being exhibited here at the gallery. How many of us has really thought about the process it took for them to finish this artwork? Similarly, with you watching this video now, you are only seeing a glimpse of what Neighbour Programme really is, hidden within the intention of the plans made by the organisers, or the background to why Neighbour Programme is being initiated at the first place. Yes, we have students from four different countries working together to complete an artwork based on a team. But is Neighbour Programme really just about the final outcome of a student's artwork or the process it took to come to it? I guess what's most important here is not the outcome, but the lessons which the participants have learned throughout the process, the knowledge received, the friendships made, the culture shared and this part of the world seen, and most of all, this experience that will be taken back home and shared, I think this is really what matters most. You have to tell everyone it's your birthday. <laughs> 